Welcome back to the channel, ladies and gentlemen. Today we're gonna to be talking about TIG pulse welding, what it is, when to use it, and how to set it up. So today we're gonna to be setting this up on the Prime Weld TIG 225. Now, not to worry if you don't have this specific machine, your knobs and buttons might be slightly different, but the general principles will still apply. So what is pulse welding? Pulse welding is a function that a lot of newer machines are coming with just from a baseline, and it can be super helpful. So the general purpose of pulse welding is to accomplish the most amount of penetration with the least amount of heat input. So in short, it is the machine cycling on and off to be able to spike some of that amperage in, wet your puddle out, and then back off and let that puddle solidify. So when are those opportunities that's gonna be a bonus? Um, number one is gonna be thin materials especially because the purpose of it is to minimize that heat input and those thinner materials are gonna absorb that heat and potentially blow out easier. Another application is autogenous welding. When you have a nice tight fitment and you're not adding any filler metal and it's not necessarily structural maybe, you can just go along and fuse that together and that pulsed arc going on and off will help you with consistency and keeping that heat down, especially with that thin sheet metal. Uh, another application for it is out of position welding. That pulsing arc is gonna help solidify that puddle and keep that puddle from falling out on you. Um, another application is gonna be TIG brazing. Uh, pulse welding is really good for TIG brazing because when you're TIG brazing, you are just wanting to melt that filler metal and you do not wanna melt that base metal or substrate. So that pulse and cycling arc is gonna help you get that blast of amperage and wet out that puddle, but not necessarily penetrate into that base metal. And the final place that I see pulse welding is super helpful with is buildup. If you are building up on a part, a lot of times you're making pass over pass over pass in order to build that material up and the ambient temperature of that piece is gonna be building up and in turn, it's gonna be wetting out more and more with every pass and you're not necessarily gonna be getting the depth of field that you're looking for in that buildup. So what that pulse welding is gonna help you do is gonna solidify that puddle and help build that area up quicker and faster and still get a tight bond to your substrate. So now that we understand what it is and when to use it, let's jump into the nitty gritty on the whiteboard here. We're gonna go over four basic principles that you're gonna to need to adjust in your settings to get this dialed in for your application. Number one is going to be your peak or total amps that go into the machine. Number two is gonna be your base amps or your background amps. Number three is gonna be your Hertz or the frequency. And number four is gonna be pulse duty or dwell time. Okay, that's better. Just for simplicity's sake, we're gonna say that all of these setups are gonna be ran at 100 amps because a lot of these settings are set in percentages and 100 is a nice round number to work with. So like I said, our first setting is gonna be our peak amps here and that is represented by the top crown of this graph. We know that we're gonna use 100 amps. We can set our peak amps or our total amps to 100 on the machine. The next one is gonna be our base amps or our background amps. Base amps are set up in percentages and we're gonna depict that in this graph by our green line. So that's gonna be our complete base, zero amps, and then the top here, since we're doing 100 amps, this is gonna be our 100%. So the way this graph depicts it here, we would be roughly about 10%. Our base amps are about 10% of our total amps. So what that means is when we're cycling here, we're gonna go up to 100 amps, and then we're gonna go down to about 10 amps or 10% of that. So if you had this set at 50%, this would only cycle down half that distance or half the temperature. So our third component that goes into this is our hertz or frequency. And this is very similar to the way AC current is laid out. We're gonna be running straight DC here, but if you watch my Prime Weld settings video, I can pop that up here. You can see and kind of comprehend that way that works. So your frequency is determined in time. So one of these cycles is a hertz, and we have one second depicted here by our blue line. So our frequency set up to one, we are gonna get one of these cycles in one second. Now, if we have it on 200, we're gonna get 200 of these cycles within one second. So when you turn that dial on your frequency, you're depicting how many of these waves happen within that one second period. So on the graph here, we just have one of them happening within one second. If you wanna tighten that up, you can get lots of them on the prime weld you can get up to 200 hertz 
per second. So that's 200 cycles per second. And the fourth and final variable is our pulse duty or our dwell time. And what this is, is the amount of time that you are at your peak amperage. So if we look at this graph here, we have this set up at one second and our peak amps go over and drop off halfway through that cycle. So this would be set at 50% to represent that. It is gonna be on for half the time of that cycle and it's gonna drop off. So I actually like to tighten this up a lot of times. We'll show this by some of the graph here because when I need the pulse feature, I'm really wanting to tighten that up. So I actually like to run my amperage a little higher and then shorten up that dwell time. So I get a blast of amperage and then it gets a lot of time to solidify and just harden that puddle up before it goes into the next one. So let's run through these other two setups here so you can see the two different variables and then we're gonna translate this over to the machine and show you some actual footage and we're gonna run through some troubleshooting so that you can figure out how to get it best set up for you. Okay, so our second setup, remember we have this depicted as one hertz on all of these. So we have our peak amps is gonna be at 100 amps and then our base amps here, so the distance between our peak and zero is a little bit higher. So we're gonna call that probably about like 35% probably because it's about 30% in between our zero and the top of our peak amps. So that's gonna allow it to drop down. It's not gonna cool down quite as much because some applications you don't want it to cool off as much. And then we have our dwell time. Our dwell time is a little bit shorter on this run. So instead of 50% like we have going up here, I'm gonna say this dwell time is more like probably about 30%. So let's do our final one here. So remember, we're running at 100 amps. So that's gonna be the top of our waveform. And then we are going to do our base amp. And in this case, I'm gonna say that is, that's creeping up on 50%. Well, let's call it, so our base or our background amps are gonna be 50% of our peak amps or total amps, which is 100 amps in this case. And then we have our frequency, which in this case, we're just doing one pulse per second. And we have our dwell time. In this one, our dwell time is set up just a little bit longer. It's gonna be more like probably 70% I'm gonna say there. So, so that current is gonna be on for longer within that cycle and then it's gonna drop off and come down. So let's jump over to the machine and see what this looks like translated into the settings on the machine so we can get you on your way. Okay, so now that we're over here at our machine, uh, I labeled out the four knobs that we're gonna be using on our prime weld at least. And these are the four settings that you're gonna be using on any machine. And then the prime weld has this fifth little feature over here. But our number one is our peak or our total amps. Our number two is our base current or our background amperage. Number three, remember, was our hertz or our frequency. And number four was our pulse duty or our dwell time. For the sake of simplicity, we're gonna bring this guy, our peak amps to 100 amps, just like we did before, 102, somewhere in there. And then we wanna set our base amps. And in most cases, I like to keep this all the way down as low as it'll go, because when I go to use it, I want it to freeze that puddle up as much as possible. When it's, if it's gonna be in the like 50% range, a lot of times I can do that on the fly, just using the pedal and adjust for that. But when I really want that puddle to freeze up is when I'm gonna be using the pulse feature to begin with. And I'm gonna run that almost all the way down. Now that can vary between the materials you're using. Some materials, you don't wanna fluctuate that amperage as much. So when it comes to frequency, Primald has this other little switch over here. And what we have here when it's on the bottom, we have straight current. And then when you wanna do from one to 10 pulses, you stick it up here on the smaller pulse feature. And then prime weld, you can run all the way up to 200 pulses per second. So if you're gonna go from 10 to 200, you put that on the middle position. A lot of times when I'm working with it and using pulse, I'm gonna be in the slower position. So I'm gonna run it up there and then most of the time, I'm gonna be in between one and three pulses per second. So we're gonna be in between down here to this range-ish. Now with the frequency, there's multiple different ways to approach it. Most of the time when I'm doing like thin sheet metal or TIG brazing or anything like that, 
I am going to be running in between the one to three pulse range. And that's gonna give you a nice rhythm to work with depending on how fast you go. It allows you to either do a lay wire method, you can lay that in there and pulse over it, or you can time it and dab in between. But that's gonna really keep the temperatures down, whether you're doing sheet metal or brazing, and allow you to get a nice dime look. Now, this machine also allows you to go all the way up to 200 pulses per second. So where those higher pulse ranges shine is when you are doing out of position welding and you maybe you're welding upside down and you want that puddle to freeze on you so it's not falling out and getting too hot and kind of sloughing off on you. Or for buildup, if you're building up a part like something that maybe needs to be machined down and you wanna just get a lot of buildup on there, that's where those higher frequencies are gonna shine. It's gonna allow you to weld almost like you're welding straight current, but it's gonna give you that good puddle freeze. You're gonna get more height on that weld, which is gonna allow you to build it up faster and not have to worry about that weld sloughing off and not really gaining ground as your part is heating up. And then our fourth position on the machine is our pulse duty cycle or dwell time. And this is set up in percentage as well. Like I said, this is all gonna depend on your application. Most of the time, by the time I wanna use pulse welding, I really want it to be stay cool or solidify because I'm not able to do it utilizing my other skills. So I'm gonna have that pulse duty somewhere down here on the lower end. So that's the hard part about pulse welding. It's gonna greatly depend on your technique and your style and what you wanna accomplish. Okay, so let's do some troubleshooting here and kinda of go over how to diagnose, how to get it set up best for you. So let's just say you're comfortable with one pulse per second. So we're gonna click this to the slow position and we're gonna get our frequency down here to right around one pulse per second. And then you set up your duty cycle and your amperage to where you think you wanna be and you make your weld and maybe you have more of a crown on it than you would like to. It's a little cold. The heat input looks good, but it didn't quite lay down the way you wanted it to. So there's a couple different things that are gonna affect that. Uh, the first thing I would do is I would turn your peak amperage up a little bit. And that is going to allow when that digs in and that initiates, it's gonna put just a little more heat into that and let that flatten out. And then maybe if that doesn't work, we're gonna turn up our duty cycle a little bit so that the time that those amps are on in that pulse is gonna be on for just a little bit longer. Or maybe you have the opposite problem and you weld it along and you're starting to burn that puddle out and it's just too flat and you want just a little bit more meat in that puddle. So before you go and turn the heat down, since you wanna cool that puddle down, a lot of that involves with your feed rate and that kind of directly translates to the frequency. So maybe instead of turning that heat down, you wanna turn that frequency up just a little bit so that you have maybe two cycles per second instead of one cycle. And then maybe you wanna turn that duty cycle down so that it's not up on that peak amperage quite as long as it normally would be. And of course, this is gonna depend on how fast you're moving your torch and how much pedal you're giving it. When I'm doing it, I'm not necessarily running full pedal. I run these settings and I like to set my settings up so that when I'm welding, I'm right around the halfway pedal range for whatever I'm welding. That way I still have some control over the puddle as well as I'm welding. If I see it getting a little hot, I don't have to stop and adjust the machine. I can just back off the pedal a little bit or add some more rod. So I'm gonna set these settings up for me personally to be right in the center of my pedal range. That's gonna vary for you for your technique. It's gonna vary whether you are dabbing with a rod, whether you are using a lay rod technique where you're just laying the rod in that joint and letting it pull swelled, or if you're using a rod at all. So remember, in the end, the results are what matter. How you get to that point, as long as it's not an on the job thing where you have a written procedure that you have to follow, how you get there doesn't really matter. It's the results in the end that matter. So don't let people beat you up on that. Find out what works best for you, how you can get the best results possible, and build some quality stuff. So if you guys wanna see some more fabrication content, make sure to click some of the links that are gonna pop up here. Thanks for watching, guys, and go build something.